Using a glaze is a really great way to get an instant antique look without using something such as a wax. We have a couple of different glazes that you could use. We have an antiquing glaze, and this is the perfect color if you want something that looks like it's been sort of gathering a bit of dirt and dust over the years. So we're gonna demo how that looks. We also have a clear glaze, and what's so great about the clear is that you can actually customize this to any color that you want. So if you want to have a black glaze or a metallic glaze, all you have to do is mix a little bit of paint into the clear glaze. So we'll show you how to do that. All right, let's get started. Why would you use glaze over top of, uh, or, or instead of a wax? So waxes are really fabulous, but they do take quite a bit of elbow grease. So. I'm going to use a little bit of glaze. You don't need a lot. This is a really inexpensive brush. I like to brush the glaze on, and then I just wipe back the excess. Now, because we are using this over top of Fusion Mineral Paint, which has a built-in top coat, you don't have to worry too much about the glaze drastically changing your color because it has nothing that is porous for it to really seep into and soak into. If you're gonna use this over top of, say, a milk paint, you would actually want to apply a clear coat such as the tough coat first. So glaze has a really long open time, which means it's very forgiving to work with. So you could leave this for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, come by and wipe away the excess and you wouldn't have to worry about it drying on you. I'm gonna now wipe away the excess and all I need to do is grab a cloth and literally just pull it back. It's gonna look pretty messy and streaky and that is normal because that's kind of the look that you're going for. You're going for a more sort of brush look, something that's had lots and lots of coats over the years. And you're just going to keep wiping back until you get your desired effect. There we go. The more pressure you apply, the more that is removed. Now, I recommend using a glaze on anything that you think you'll be doing a heavy amount of, of washing on, because you don't want to use a wax on something like that. So, for example, if you're doing um, kitchen cabinets and you know there's going to be a lot of washing of those, I would recommend the glaze. However, what we must keep in mind is that the glaze it's got a very long open time and it's not as sturdy and durable as the paint is itself. So you actually will want to add a clear coat, top coat onto this. I recommend using the tough coat, which is the non-yellowing clear coat that is a water base. You want to wait approximately 24 hours after applying the glaze to put anything else over top of it because if you add anything too soon, it will reactivate it and any water-based products will reactivate it and you'll actually end up removing all of it. So there you go. It looks like all of the little areas in the corner, all of the glaze has sat in there really nicely. So let's take a look at sort of the before and the after. So that's what the antiquing glaze looks like. Really nice aged antique look. Quite pretty. Okay. Now on to our next one. We have a clear glaze. So with the clear glaze, you can actually customize any color that you want. So we're gonna go a little bit bold here just to show you for demonstration purposes what you can create. We're gonna take the clear glaze and we're actually gonna mix in a little bit of Liberty Blue and we're gonna do a blue glaze over top of this cabinet. So I'm going to throw about you want about three parts glaze to one part paint. And you can play with this and control exactly how much you want. So you can make it more transparent by adding more clear glaze or more opaque by adding more of the paint. And again, you could use a metallic, you could use any of the fusion colors. So the clear glaze is like an extender almost for the paint and it really goes really far. So you're gonna get a really nice color out of this. Super pretty. I'd recommend mixing it in, you know, a mason jar of some sorts, but just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you what it looked like mixed. 
And again, it's, it's a, a ratio that you can customize. So let's see how this looks. Paint it on. It's gonna look pretty bold to begin with. However, when we wipe it back, we are gonna pull off that excess. Think of French country kitchen with the blues, the bright blues, super pretty. There we go. So we'll get that in. You do not have to be fancy when you are applying it. You can use an inexpensive brush. I like using a brush because I can get into all the little areas here, but messy is totally fine. Okay. And then you wanna take a cloth and we are just gonna clean off the excess and pull it back. There we go. Now that is a fun, fun, fun blue. Gorgeous. Now the great thing about using a glaze is if it doesn't quite turn out exactly how you want it to, you can repaint over it a couple days later, but you really want it to cure up completely. If you didn't like this look right now, it's so water sort of permeable that you could probably just add water to it and remove it. But we're gonna remove the excess with this rag. I'm gonna put this down, it's a little bit easier to work with it on a flat surface. There we go. Again, super easy to work with and you can customize any glaze color you like by adding paint to it. And once this is done, you want to wait about 24 hours and then you put your clear tough coat over top of it to add extra durability and protection. If this was sort of the legs of a table that you're not going to wash very often, then you could just leave it at this step right here. Okay. And there we have it. There is our custom blue glaze. And then here is the antiquing glaze. So you can really get any look that you want with either of them.